sadness from wherever you've been. Come, broken hearted, the rescue begin. Come, find your mercy, oh, a sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Lay down your Hey guys, so if y'all didn't know, my name's John David, and I'm from El Dorado, Arkansas, which is a super small town. And basically, I moved there in sixth grade from Little Rock, Arkansas, and it was a big change. I was used to Little Rock with skyscrapers, and just if I wanted to go do something, there was somewhere in Little Rock where I could go do that. And then moving to El Dorado, there was like oil wells, a Walmart, and a Dollar General. And there's more than that, but you know, you get the gist. There's not a lot you can do. And it was just a big change. And so in sixth grade, I moved there and was completely overwhelmed. And for the first year of living there, I had no idea what I was doing. I just kind of coasted along and didn't really know what I was doing. And then in seventh grade, I got to join my church's youth group. And that's where I met my youth pastor, Josh Holt, and one of my best friends, Becca Dotson. And over the years, as we got to grow closer to each other, I kind of figured out what love was from them. And when I think of loving others, I think of them. Um, they were there for me through the hard parts of my life and through challenges. And they were also there for me for just playing board games or going to play football or soccer, or, you know, whatever we wanted to do. And 
I think this is what God's love calls us to do. Um, John 13, 32 tells us to love one another as God loved us. And this is exactly what they did. They never judged me for what I was going through. They never made fun of me. They never held it against me. They just listened, they understood, and they cared for me. And I think this is what love is. Um, oftentimes in today's world, we think of love as like these giant gestures of like buying your girlfriend a teddy bear on Valentine's Day or taking them out on an expensive date and with roses and chocolates and all that. But I think a more accurate definition of love and of specifically of God's love is just a constant presence of being in someone's life. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 says this perfectly, describing love as patient, kind, and not boastful. And then it rounds it out saying that love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. This is how God loves us, not with these giant gestures, but with just a patience and a kindness and just a consistent presence of being there. Because Josh and Becca were always in my life, they kind of filled me up with love, and then that caused me to want to go and fill up the person next to me with love. And this is what God calls us to do, to not just love those who it's easy to love, but to love everyone, to love our neighbors, to love those we don't like, to love everyone that's around us. <clears throat> And then 1 Corinthians 13 also states that without love, we have nothing. And I thought about this for a while, but I think this is an earth-shattering statement. The world we're in does not always choose love. And in fact, a lot of times it chooses against love. It chooses to hate our enemies and push them away and just ignore them and pretend they're not there. But God calls us to love everyone. This reminds me of one of my really good friends, Grace Beckham. We met a few years ago at OMP. And while at the camp, we didn't really know each other that well. Throughout, throughout the years outside of camp, we just began talking and getting to know each other. And Grace was always intentional about, intentional about asking how I was, how I was doing, like just what I was doing in life and genuinely just wanted to know what I was doing. And throughout like just getting to know each other, um, Grace and I figured out we had a lot of similarities, including reading, liking to read books. And so we kind of nerded out about books and we now exchange books with each other and just send each other books that we enjoy and think the other person would enjoy. And I think this is what God calls us to do. Um, Grace could have easily just outside of camp, never talked to me again. And, you know, that would have been the end, but because she went out of her way to intentionally keep up with me and to just ask how I was doing, she really got to know me and loved me and has kind of pushed me to be a stronger Christian. And this is what God's love wants us to do. It wants us to go out of our way to love each other more. And just to then, once grace loved me, I was then able to better love the, those around me. And that's what God calls us to do. <clears throat> Oftentimes, like love is just shown as interest in someone's life as grace did to me. Um, the world kind of tries to make us callous to others and just to look the other way when something bad happens. But God, God calls us to just really lean into others and just truly understand where they're coming from and what they're going through. Um, one of my favorite things about OMP is just the coming of gather, the coming together of people from all walks of life. Um, my favorite night of OMP is neighbor night and getting to hear all the neighbors talk about how the their campers have just impacted their life. And oftentimes you don't even hear them talk about the work being done on their house. You hear about them, how they have just seen the campers loving each other, loving the neighbors, and just really just how that has changed their lives. And I think that's just amazing because that's what God calls us to do. He doesn't want us to have these giant gestures of building a wheelchair ramp, which obviously he wants us to do, but that is not all his love is. His love is also getting to know your neighbor and getting to just talk to them and see where they're coming from. And I think that's one of the amazing things about OMP. And kind of another way to think about love is thinking about like a parents with a newborn child. A lot of times the child, they're screaming and crying at like 3 a.m. in the night because they need a change of diaper, they need food or, you know, whatever babies need. And Oftentimes a parent doesn't want to get out of bed at 3 a.m. I don't want to get out of bed at 3 a.m. And so, but because those parents love their child so deeply, they put their own needs aside to love their child. And that's what God calls us to do. He calls us to have a selfless love, a kind of love where we don't think about how to benefit ourselves, but how to benefit those around us. 
<clears throat> and this kind of creates a domino effect, which I've kind of talked about, but when you love others and fill up their cup, then they can then go and love the person next to them, and then they can love the person next to them. And this is how God wants us to be. He wants us to love those around us, so then we can then spread that love. And that's how people kind of talk about um, John. <clears throat> John 13 also talks about when we love as God did, that's how people know we are his disciples. And when we have this kind of love that creates that domino effect, that's how we spread God's word and we just show the world that we are his disciples. And so hopefully this kind of encourages you to not think about the big gestures of, you know, going so far out of your way once a month or whatever, but to just have that consistent presence and just to love people by getting to know them and listening to them and just kind of asking how their day was, because I think that is how God wants us to love, and that's how God loves us. Um, and just to kind of wrap everything up, God calls us to love each other with like a patient, kind, and selfless love, and that just kind of builds people up and can then allow them to love others. And then for your worship response tonight, I want you to just write a letter to the neighbor you're serving on a note card. It doesn't have to be really long. It's going to be a few sentences. Just thank them for you know, being nice, giving you food or whatever, just write to them how, like, you've seen love in your in your group or in, through them or just how you've been seeing love throughout this week and just take it to your work site tomorrow, give it to your driver or one of your college staff and just give the, letter, give the letters to your neighbor and just let them know how you've seen love. Thank you. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you.
trust 